Today I'll be showing you how to make a Chinese Szechuan dish called Mapo Tofu or Mabo Tofu. And to get started, first we're going to prepare our rice, which I have some nice Japanese long grain rice. And I'll be doing some special things with it, is I'll be mixing in what is called a black rice, which you can really see very well on the camera, but it will have some cool things. So we'll start by using our rice cooker measuring cup. Remember, don't, whenever you get a rice cooker, don't throw away your rice cooker measuring cup. So I'll start by pouring in some black rice because I don't want too much. But it'll do really cool stuff at the end, I'll uh, get to say that at least. I'm going to pour a long grain rice and I'm going to take it up to the fill line. And it looks good and now we're going to pour it into our rice cooker can. Now we go to the sink and wash our rice. We do that to get rid of the, the excess starch which is in the long grain rice. It'll make it, it'll make it very goopy so we're getting rid of the extra rice. So what I like to do is continuously stir with your hands while filling it up almost all the way and then pouring out the water like, like so. And then we do that uh, at, like two to three times and that usually gets rid of most of the starch. And it looks good. Now we're going to fill it the fill line and since we're in a dry place, filling it up to the fill line is too little water and it usually ends up very dry, which if you ever had dry a dry rice, you know it's not very appetizing. So we're just going to make sure it's level and then go and start the rice cooker and make sure to wipe the uh, bottom of your pan because Otherwise it'll steam on the inside. I don't know if it's good or bad for your rice cooker, but it's always good to be safe, just in case. The ingredients you'll need for your mapo tofu include some soy sauce. I have some nice soy sauce that tastes way better than your normal kikamin soy sauce. You need some kind of spicy chili paste. I have gachajang, which should work for our purposes. Then, because I'm a little lazy, I have garlic paste and ginger paste, since I don't want to chop either of them. Then I have some silken tofu, because that's my favorite tofu to use for mapo tofu. And also the most important ingredient is Szechuan pepper. And then I also have some uh, green onion, and then of course you need some black pepper. And I couldn't find any ground pork at any of the local grocery stores. So instead, I bought some pork sausage links. Not the greatest things in the world since they'll add extra seasoning, but they'll do for our purposes with this. So to get started, we'll be, we'll be chopping our onion. The thinner the better. First trim off the ends. And then I could have gone a lot thinner, but it doesn't really matter. Just chop, just chop, chop, chop. So I get to somewhere within like the white green area before like the uh, it starts branching off because those are still kind of whitish and safe enough to fry. Then I'm just gonna chop up, chop some of the greens for garnish. You don't have to do it, but I like the look of the green contrasting with the red. Then we want to add some oil to a pan and, and get it nice and hot so we can brown the uh, ginger, garlic, and uh, onion. And then I leave the uh, garlic and ginger paste in the pan a little too long as I get my onions. Definitely should have prepared a little better, but I ended up uh, making that mistake not once, but twice at least, I believe. Now you can see some of it sticking to the pan there. What I want to do is stir them together to get all the flavor. You see I'm leaving the, uh, the ingredients to sit there for way too long. You're beginning to burn, you can watch it in real time because I'm taking too long.
what I should have done was first remove the, the meat from the casings first, rather than later. Add a little bit more oil for the uh, links. I probably didn't need to because the links should have oil in them. But I start breaking them down and it's, it doesn't work out so well. So the better tool would be like a potato masher to do what I'm doing or just you should have removed the uh, the meat from the casings. And then I get two uh, wooden spoons, if you could call them spoons, and I start trying to rip them apart with little success. So I try to get them as small as possible. And then after trying all of that, I then decided to just get out another pot and see if I could just push them up by applying pressure, but since the pressure is so equally distributed upon each of the uh, a piece of sausage, it doesn't work. I'm just dirtying a pot. So I just leave it there to, sit, to, to cook a little more. I try to get the meat out of the casings. Then I sit it there to uh, brown some more, the developed flavor. Then, then I transfer them out onto a plate, which you cannot see because of limited camera angles. But then using the residual fat left in there, we want to add our gacha jang and brown it a little bit. But I take a really long time to open the gacha jang, and so the fond in the pot starts to burn. Luckily it did not burn, it got really close to burning. They want to add it to the pot, I added probably like, what is that, maybe a quarter of a cup, a little less than a quarter of a cup, and brown that. When we brown that, it'll develop a nice red flavor, and you will not need to use red food dye to get the nice red color that Mapo Tofu should have. So I set, I set it off to the side so it doesn't burn as I get the rest of the ingredients ready. She you need a cup of water or chicken stock, and then I should have left it on the heat because it would have made it easier to remove the fond on the bottom of the pan. And then you want to get it simmering. and then add some of your meat back to the pot. This will cause the flavors in the meat to seep back into the broth mixture and will develop even more flavors. Then while that's simmering, what we want to do is, you normally use cornstarch, but I happen to not have any cornstarch, but I did have some, uh, f some like frying mixture that like it's just flour and some spices and some other ingredients. And I use that instead of cornstarch, so what you want to do is mix a small amount of some starch, like cornstarch, but, and add to some water. So just make sure to mix it all together, and get that ready, but first we're going to get our tofu. What I like to do is cut it open with a knife, like cutting the, cutting the sides, and then draining out some of the liquid. Then just then going and cutting it to the side. Let's make some space on our cutting board, and then we're just gonna flip it out. Looks like, ooh, we got some broke off. Well, that's unfortunate. Then we want to cut it in half, which is, the silken tofu is extremely easy to cut. You just need to slide your knife through it. should easily cut through it, even easier than butter. It makes butter look incredibly hard to cut with a stiff, with a hot knife. This is way easier. Then just cut into small cubes. You 
And now back at the burner, we're now going to add our tofu to the pot. And this is where I make, um, I make some mistakes in this part. We're adding the tofu, but what I should have done was add in the, the starch water mixture first because it would make the next step way easier. Because the problem with silken tofu is that it's really soft and very fragile. But now I'm adding my starch mixture, which I should have added before adding the tofu. Mostly because stirring silken tofu is a pain and I mess it up really badly. So I'll add a little bit of the starch mixture at a time until I see some thickening see some of the tofu is breaking down, but if you stir it, gently fold. I'm not gently folding in this. I'm being very aggressive. Don't do that. You see all those tofu chunks? That's because that's not from, from before. That's from me being aggressive. So I add more of the mixture and I fold it. Not very well, breaking up the tofu into smaller pieces. Now I'm going to add some black pepper, probably something I should have added before adding the tofu as well because I have to stir that in. So you can see more and more tofu is being broken down. And now I'm going to add the Szechuan pepper. The Szechuan pepper is really cool because rather than having like a spicy taste, Instead has like a numbing effect on your mouth, so it's really cool See as we stir more and more tofu is breaking down We should have added the spices before we added the tofu and then the thickening Agent which you can now see it's thickening up very nicely for something that was improvised now I want to add more Szechuan pepper, stir it, you see more and more of the tofu is breaking down to smaller and smaller pieces. Now we're going to add the rest of our meat. And add some green, add the green onion. Now, now we had the, this took a little while because I didn't time it very well, but the rice cooker is still cooking, and so no, we'll just wait for that to go off. And our rice cooker is done by playing that nice jingle. So now we get to see what the inside, what happens when we cook normal rice with our, our nice black rice. You see, it turned black, or in this case, it turned purple, which is really cool. It's always a fun little thing to show. So we're first going to fluff the rice. Now we're gonna scoop our rice into our bowl. Look at that nice, beautiful purple color. The nice thing about the black rice is it'll add protein and fiber into the rice that otherwise wouldn't have had it because it's a less milled down version of the rice grain. Because remember, rice is a grain, just like wheat. So just look at that nice purple color. Now, we're going to scoop some of our mapo tofu up. I grab a ladle. I'm still set about all that broken down tofu that could have been larger chunks. See? This is why you brown your gachujang, your chili paste. It makes a nice red color. And with that, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. If you can follow me on Mastodon. And remember to... Yorokobe-shounen. Kimi no negai wa... Yoyaku kanau.